Wash them and brush your hair. Mind now, don't waste water. Mama, will you braid my hair? I showed you how a hundred times. You go wash up. Hi, Miss Andy. Party? Sure, I'm hungry. Look at yourself. You're gonna eat with your hands and your face unwashed? What would your pa say when we get back to Fort Bridger if you got into a habit like that? You go wash. And don't waste water. No, ma'am. Don't pay Mrs. Andy no mind when she goes on at you like that. Sometimes women, they just gotta fuss like a jaybird over a garden snake. Your pa's gonna be real proud of you. You've grown and learned a lot since he went west. Riders coming in. Howdy. Where are you folks bound? Fort Bridger, then California. You boys? Well, right now, mister, we'd be willing to settle for the next town. <laughs> what stallion would that be? Belongs to the boy here. Son, I'll give you three of these horses for him. No, sir. Here's you're the man to do business with. The whole string for two fresh horses, some meat, and enough supplies to get us to Fort Bridger. And a jug, if you don't mind. Where'd you get them? Well, they were running wild, and me and Judd here caught them, broke them. But, well, sir, we're horse tamers. That's what we do for a living. Well, how about it, Wagon Master? We got a deal? Deal. Something wrong, Hardy? Them men. They ain't riding high shoulder saddles. What does that mean? It means they ain't horse breakers. We could see those horses, and you could put those goods together. We'd like to make some miles for dark. Well, here's to me. Let them horses go awful cheap. Command should be looking for the ones that stole them. Trail stops here. If I got to say anything more than that, you got the brains of a grasshopper.
Red. Oh, Betty Sue. You turn around and go right back. What would your mama say if she knew? She wouldn't care if I was with you. You go back. I gotta find Big Red. I wanna come with you. Do you have to follow me everywhere I go? Come on. You'll have to be quiet. There might be Indians around. Because we'd gone off and left you. Party time! Plums? Everything's plums to you. These aren't plums, these are raspberries. Well, maybe if we take some back, Mrs. Andy won't be so mad at us for making the wagon train get a late start. One inch, and I'm never taking you anywhere again. I want mommy. Just sit there. I'll be right back. We gotta go on alone. Indians keep and our folks had to go west. Now we gotta go meet them. I stay here just like you said. I know, Betty Sue. And I surely appreciate it. Now we gotta go. Those Indians might come back. I want Mama. We gotta sneak away. We gotta hide. Is it like a game? It's like hide and seek. Only we have to run a long way before we can hide. All right.
you seen Collins? Over in the crowd trying to break his full neck. <laughs> Bill Squires, can't you show up somewhere without stirring up the dust? I've been looking to find you. But I thought you said you never wanted to lay eyes on me again. You stole my horse. I won him fair and square in that poker game, and you know it. I was drunk. You were sober enough to check into me with that full house. Must have made you tremble, you sitting there holding them four queens. Yeah, and your horse. Never did like the knothead anyway. <laughs> well, you said you was looking for me. What? Yeah, we gotta talk, Scott. Yeah, sure. Looks like the Indians hit them about daybreak. Never had a chance. Comanche? Youngsters. No boy the age of yours was among them. What about a little girl? About five. None. Mm -hmm. Andy Powell and his wife, they were among them. What girl belonged to him? Betty Sue. Well, maybe the Comanche just packed them up and hauled them off. Sometimes they take young males and raise them up as bucks. How many of them? I don't know, five or six. Hit and run sort. It's not likely they'd be taking any captives. Besides this here Cheyenne country. A small war party wouldn't want to run the risk of getting some Cheyenne. They want to be moving fast. Youngins would just slow them up. You think the youngsters got away? I figure they're back there somewhere. <laughs> They sure don't stand much chance out there alone. Well, I figure they're not alone either. Big Red. Stallion, my boy Hardy, raised from a colt. He'd outrun anything on those plains, including Comanche ponies. I'm going back. You realize they might already be dead. That boy worked beside me ever since he could walk. He knows how to snare a rabbit, build a bow and arrow. And I taught him how to shoot. And how to survive. If he's alive, he's going to be expecting me. You can't go out there alone. That boy's all I got, Bill. Uh, give me a couple minutes, I'll get a fresh mount and go with you. Figured you would. Figured I would. My pa taught me how to make a bed like this. Daddy, will you help me braid my hair? I don't know how to braid your hair. Never mind, I'll try to remember how Mom showed me. Come on, you gotta wash your hands and face before you go to sleep.
Honey, should I say my prayers? Yeah. I think you better. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Hard country, Scott. Them kids ain't gonna last long out here if they're walking. You know, I know it ain't been said, but what if them Indians got that stallion? It would be a wasted good horse flesh, then. Comanche rides a horse half to death and eats him. Now, they're together. Hardy raised that horse like a pup, and they haven't been apart since. Besides, Red wouldn't allow no commands to ride him off. Well, it's a Cheyenne country, and Cheyenne would kill for a horse like that. I don't need to be hearing that, you know. Well, if those kids are dead, I mean to find their bodies and bury them decent. But I'm betting they're alive. So we're talking like you're attending a funeral, huh? You think we're wasting our time here? You go on back. Well, I'm not thinking like no, that. No, you're I'm not just... thinking. Cheyenne. Push that right.
Looks like you two know each other. Yep, we've crossed trails before. I was apologizing for throwing down on us. They're looking for a couple of white men. Fears they uh, killed a pair of Comanche bucks over some horses. She thought that the net thought that. The same horses were spotted in the wagon camp before the Comanche war party attacked. The chief's afraid since this here is Cheyenne country, they'd get the blame. He caught Painted Face over there with the Henry Rifle, Wagon Master's name on it. Did he say anything about the two horse thieves? No, where were the wagons? War party's still out looking for them. What's that all about? I believe he's asking us what we're doing here in Cheyenne country. She don't know what she did. Hope you told him. Yeah, I did. He wishes us luck. And what's he saying? <coughs> he says we're going to need it. Long way to go, Betty Sue. How long? Four days, maybe more. Will we ever eat? We'll eat. Good. trail today. Indians won't ride in the rain unless they have to. Honey, I'm awful hungry. I know. 
My pop told me the only way a man can get through this world is by using his brain. Bear's got his claws. Wolf's got his nose. Hawk's got his wings. And a man, he can get along if he uses his brain. Hardy, is your pa really coming to get us? He's coming. We still got to head for Fort Bridger, away from the trail. Anyway, my pa told me to think of the worst possible thing that could happen. Plan for it. So I got to use my brain and get us something warm to wear. Something warm to eat or drink. Hardy, plans! Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts. Ready? What's the matter? Maybe I should have brought Hardy out with me instead of leaving him to come out with Andy Powell. No good blaming yourself. I'm not talking about blame. I'm talking about two kids who are out there somewhere with no chance. No chance is just what they'll have if you turn back now. Well, who's talking about turning back? You for the last ten miles and I'm tired of listening to it. So am I. Coming.
Fort Bridger. You seen any sign of two youngsters? Out here? Yeah, they're lost. Poor souls. We've heard Indians are on the rampage. Well, them's Comanches. See, this is Cheyenne country. You'll find them pretty friendly. My wife's brother's out looking for game. He might have seen them. We're about to call it a day. You're welcome to stay the night. We've plenty for supper. We could use a couple of extra rifles, at least for one night. Even you gotta rest sometime, Scott. Huh? No, thanks, but we'll stay until your scout gets back. Is Red gonna be all right? He's hurt, Betty Sue. He's hurt real bad. He can't go much further. His wife wasn't more than a girl when she died. That's when he decided to come west, make a new home for himself and his son. See, Collins come out alone. Left his boy with a good family in Wisconsin. They come out a year later. They got as far as Bitter Creek. It's about a oh, three-day horseback ride from Fort Bridger. I was riding scout when I come across him. Comanches. Mm -hmm. Collins' boy seemed to have survived. Him, little girl, riding a big red stallion. Do you think they're still alive? Mm -hmm. He won't think otherwise. Sir. He's got it into his head that he can't get up. Won't even try. Red, get up. No use. Please get up, Brad. Atta boy, Red. He's gonna be okay. He's gonna be okay. About you, Gray. I seen some Indians last night. Decided to stay low. How many? These two fellows are from Fort Bridger. About a half dozen. I can't tell one tribe from another, but they were painted. You didn't see two kids, did you, Gray? No, ma'am. But I did see some mighty strange tracks yesterday. Looked like two kids and a horse, a big horse. Whereabouts? You know where them bluffs are near the Timberline River running below it. Yeah, I know that ground. Right there. That had to be since the rain. Like yesterday. Yeah. You find that boy of yours? I will, ma'am. Let's go, Bill. They're alive.
straight for them folks we just left. We gotta help them, Scott. I finally got a clue to where the kids are. All right, how do you want to do it? We're looking for two men, aren't they? We're two men, aren't we? I can count. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I'd say they'll be chasing them horses two days. Yeah, maybe three. Well, that'll give those folks in the wagons time to get away. Yeah. Come on. Hey! Hey. A couple of kids. Judd, that's that horse from the wagon train. Yeah. That's some kids, too. No. My pa will be coming along. What you doing out here, boy? The wagon train got attacked by Indians. So me and Betty Sue had to come on alone. We had red, so we kept riding and camping. There's this big Indian following us. We just ran into a grizzly bear and red fought him. We just barely got away. You think we stupid? A grizzly kill you quicker than scat. And no horse can stand up to a grizzly. Red wasn't afraid. He fought him. I reckon he did at that. Claw marks. It just don't seem reasonable, boy, you two out here alone like this. You say your pa's hunting you? How do you know that? I just know he is, because that's the way my pa is. <laughs> Probably figures the engine's got you by now. <laughs> your pa ain't hunting you, boy. That's not so. He is hunting us. I just know he is. Boy, get off that horse. Well, come on. I don't like those men. I don't like them either. Go to sleep. Look at it, Judd. Ain't nobody knows they're alive. And I'd give an arm for that horse. But that engine that boy's talking about. It's just boy's talk. Yeah? Well, I sure would like to know who that boy's pa is. It don't matter. Nobody will ever hear. Somebody bound to recognize that horse. We swapped him. Traded him from some Indian. Look, ain't one chance in a million we'd ever run across anybody that knowed him. I sure hope you're right. <laughs> I'm telling you something, Cal. This boy's gonna grow up and be a fine hand someday. You wanna ride me that horse this morning? My pa don't let anybody ride red, him or me. The pa ain't here, boy. I'll ride it when I see fit. My pa'll be coming along. He has a way about him. Well, just where is your pa, boy? He's a Fort Bridger. Bridger, huh? What's your pa, boy? Soldier? He's a wild horseman. He breaks horses and mules for the army. He's also mighty good with a gun. <laughs> he mighty good with a gun, huh? Just who is your pa, boy? Scott Collins. I heard of him. I figured you had. You being horse breakers, too. Uh, we better have us another think. If you're figuring on keeping that horse, you better not be thinking about riding him now. What we ought to do is just saddle up and get out of here. 
That's my boss, or you just leave him alone. Steady, boy. Easy now. Steady. to get some food. Hardy, that's scary. Well, they're gonna hurt us. Or even kill us if they catch us. That old stag and this grizzly really had at it. Yeah, this old fellow's fought a lot of wars. Signs of your boy all over the place. Girl, too. Looks like the Indian got into it some. Yeah, he worked on him with his knife. Looks like he finished him off at 4570. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Boxing track. And you're still following the kids. Yeah. Big Red again? Big Red will find us. I just know he will.
I knew you'd come. Where have you been, Red? Stallion's tracks are leading south. The Indian pony following. Well, the youngster's tracks are all around here. You know, like as if someone was chasing them. It'd be those Comanche killers. Looks like they messed around that old stump over there. Then they come over here. Then went back over there. On up the valley, walking. And the horse got away. I'm going to find him, Bill. I can feel it. Tracks are headed north. I doubt they'd tackle that mountain. Well, Hardy might. He'd try to go where they wouldn't expect him. Then he'd try to point best he could towards Bridger. Well, that's a heap to ask him a 12-year-old. Yeah, I know it. You know, Bill, I sometimes wish he had it easier. But now I'm glad he didn't. He's had to learn to be responsible. When he makes it through this, it'll be because of that. Well, I reckon we should eat, huh? Then we'll figure out what to do later. Good idea. I'll scout around downstream, see if I can cut out some tracks on that stallion. <laughs> I found signs of that stallion downstream. The kids with him? Looks like somehow they caught up with each other. They headed north. What about that Indian? He's right behind them. Why is that Indian after us, Hardy? I've been thinking about that. I don't think he wants us. He wants Big Red. That's not very nice. Nobody, Sue, it's not. Are you going to let him have red? Not if I can help it. Good. Coming. We better stop here. Looks to me like someone holed up here for quite a spell. Wind's changing. Could blow up a storm. Yeah. You know old Pete Schiffern had a place around here somewhere. Him and me hunted every inch of this country together. <laughs> he says he found gold. All I know is one day he took out a Ford Hall like the devil was after him. <laughs> Slipped off with quite an outfit. What happened? I don't know. Nobody ever saw him again. Maybe the Indians got him. Well, if we can find his place, maybe we can hole up. That's what I was thinking. What do you figure your boy will do? Same as we will. Find himself a hole and crawl in it. We've waited out storms back home before. He probably seen it coming and found himself some cover. He's a good boy.
might be. I like this place. It's warm. Yeah. I'd like to stay, but we gotta get to Fort Bridger. We're leaving in the morning. I'm gonna go see Big Red before we get to sleep. Don't you worry. No wolf is going to get us in here. I hope your pa finds us. Oh, he'll find us. I bet he's looking for us right this minute. Squires, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Just how old are you? I was 33 and 43, 43 and 53, 53. <laughs> I'm pretty old. Well, don't you think you're just a mite too old to be riding around these mountains anymore? What do you mean by that? Well, let's think about that little girl with Hardy. If we make it through this, we'll have to look after her. We'll? You know that little place I got west of Bridger? It ain't much, but it's a start. I thought you... You thought wrong! I ain't slept under a roof in 40 years, and I ain't gonna start now. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Hmm. I reckon we'll just have to send her to one of those orphan places. I hear they got one in St. Louis. And they got one in Kansas. And they got two in Texas, and I've been in all of them. And she ain't going to one of them orphan places, and that's final. Good.
It's all right, Red. We'll handle it. Hardy boy, where are you? Squires? Moccasin tracks. Yeah, some engine's been sitting by our camp watching for some time. Them are the same horse tracks as the Indian that's following the kids. Let's go. The wolves might come back, but they'll follow us from a distance, that's for sure. So we gotta find a shelter for all of us. A place where we can keep a fire going. Because wild animals are afraid of fire. Hey, wait a minute. Let's go. We won't see her today. Find us a place to stop. So you keep looking, Betty Sue, because you might see something that I don't. Are you ever going to be wolves? Maybe. But don't worry, because we're going to build us a fire. We are going to make it, Betty Sue. I just know we are. You know that too, don't you? 
Yes. Roll up in that buffalo coat and go to sleep. You forgetting that Scott Collins boy? Don't bother me none. Yeah, well, it bothers me. I smell smoke coming from the south. Wolves. Don't sound like they're hunting. Sounds like they got some corners down there. I bet you eight to five it's them youngins. Look, there's your wolves. Yeah. Come on. Come, come, come. Boys, fire all right. Yeah. That horse is with him, too. There's his tracks. Let's go. Wait a minute. Ain't no sense in running around out there in the dark. Why don't we stir up the fire a little bit and uh, break out the jug? We'll go find him first thing in the morning. I'll go get the horses. Thank you. 
somebody else been in here besides that boy. Who's gonna be out here this time of year? I don't know, but somebody been in here. Man just don't go off and leave a good coat like this. Smoke. Yeah. Could be the children. And it could be engines. And it could mean horse thieves, too. And it could be that engine that was following the kids went and got himself some help. Seen those other horse tracks. All right, let's throw a loop around the area cutting for sign. If anyone rode in there, they should have left some tracks. If we ride a wide enough circle, we're bound to find them. It'll take a while. It's better than riding blind. Let's go. Looks like your horse wandered off during the night. I'll go find him for you. Good. Make sure you come back. Oh, don't talk foolish. Man, be crazy want to ride in this country all by itself. That's what I mean. You just sit tight. I'll find him for you. I'll sit tight. This is Pete Shifflin's coat. There's got to be gold in there somewhere. Things to talk about, boy. We might make ourselves a deal. Besides, I know where your pa is. You take us to my pa? Sure enough. Tell me where the man is that belongs to that coat. I'll take you to your pa. We're coming in. Where's the man that wears that coat? I don't rightly know. You know when he'll be back? No, sir. Look, boy, don't lie to me. That coat's been wore recent. We've been using it as a blanket. You're lying. You didn't have no coat before. We found it. You found it? Where? Back yonder. Camped in a cabin during the storm. The coat was there. You see anything of that man, Shifflin? We didn't see anybody. That man you're talking about must have gone off and got himself hurt. Maybe even Indians killed him. Why do you say that? Well, nobody was in the cabin. The coat was just there. He didn't go off to stay. No, he left too much of his outfit behind. You're right smart, boy. Right smart. If Judd comes back in here, you're not to mention anything about this. You understand? Do you understand? I won't. As long as you give us some of what you're after. <laughs> You'll do, boy. You'll do. What is it you think Shifflin had? Mm, gold or furs? I don't think it was furs. No, I didn't see any traps around. I think it was gold. The you young is just rest of mine. I figure we got us a chance to get rich. Tell me something, boy. You figure that horse of yours is out there somewhere? He wouldn't go far. Suppose you went out there and you called him and he heard you. Would he come in? I 
think so. Well, suppose you get out there and you start calling him a few times. Your little sister here will stay with me. Don't you hurt her. What kind of talk is that, boy? Huh? You and me's pars, aren't we? So you know where that shifting cabin is, and I don't. I'm not likely to hurt you, now, am I? Go on. Get up there and call him. Go on. We're still riding blind. Run! Hardy. Well, we better get down there fast. Them Indians heard your boy, too, and they're a lot closer than we are. Get back up there! You better listen, mister. Those Indians coming! You're lying. I'm not! How many did you see? About five or six, maybe even more. Get inside. Where's Judd? Get behind those rocks. Don't be scared. We'll be all right. At least your pa will come, Hardy. He'll come. You'll see. Keep quiet back there. Horse ears are still out there. Call them now. Look, them Indians ain't likely to kill a young'un. I want a running chance. Now you call that horse, or I'll kill a both of you, and I won't wait for no Indian. No, I won't do it. Boy, I'll kill her. Now you're running out of time, and she's got a little less than that. Call that horse now. Mister, you stick your head out to shoot us. Those Indians will kill you for sure. Listen, boy. You call that horse over here. On him, we can get away scot free. Call him. It's a sure enough lie, Betty Sue. He wants red for himself. No! Boy, call that horse! Ah! Come out of there!
Call that horse, kid. I won't. Call him. Go down the right. Pa. Got Collins. I ain't got a chance against two of you. He'll stay out of it. That boy sure bragged on you. Said you were the best. Let's find out. Betty Sue. I think she'd like that. Well, I'd like that too. I surely would. Well, I wouldn't. She's riding with me, and that's final. <laughs> <laughs> 